What's up, Janky fam? All right, so a while back, I had posted a video reviewing some of the most commonly recommended car packs in the Aceto community. There were an absolute ton of packs suggested for me to review in my next video. And now that I've had a chance to run a lot of them on both my old T300 setup and my current Alpha Mini setup, the time has come for part two. For context on the ratings, and for those new to the channel, last year I bought a 2007 Nissan 350Z and made the jump from sim drifting to the real thing. So realism is probably the largest overall factor in the ratings here. Anyway, in this video, and in alphabetical order to avoid spoilers, I'll be ranking 1 to 1 Simulation, ADC 420, Aiden's S13, BDC Street, Death Wish Garage, Excite, Fumi, Gravy Garage, The Stock Kunos Cars, Lenny's 180SX, Tando Buddies, this one I refuse to pronounce, and World Drift Tour Street, holy sh that was a mouthful. I've been pushing this video back forever and it is time to rip the band-aid off, starting with lucky number 13, which is Tando Buddies. To be clear, since I had a few folks comment on the last video, Tando being on this list is not an indication that I think they're realistic, but for a while they were pretty frequently used and pretty frequently recommended. For some backstory, this pack was evidently made by real life drifters back in the day who were driving on Logitech wheels and wanted an easier pack to transition over to sim. I personally don't care for them because it feels like you're driving on ice and at the same time, they are way too forgiving on transition. So are they realistic? by today's standards? No. But some people really like them and people are in fact allowed to enjoy things without us collectively shitting on them as a community. Number 12, in a very similar vein, ADC420. No idea if this person was legit or not, but someone posted in the comments of my last car pack review saying that they were a contributor to ADC420 and that it borrows a decent bit of physics from Tando just with some updated tires and inertia values. They do feel more realistic to me than Tando, but there's almost something preventing you from over rotating and the community affectionately calls this cheater physics. But again, if you like them, cool. Are they realistic? I don't think so, but I have seen a few people say that these feel similar to their real life drift car, so take that as you will. Number 11. Now, I always get a bunch of comments about this one, so let me apologize in advance, but it's Lenny's 180SX. So this mod runs on Arch Physics, and I actually released a separate video giving a pretty in-depth review about how I thought they handled compared to real life. For anyone unfamiliar, Arch is often touted as by far the most realistic handling on a set of Corsa, but my initial review was that this car felt super loose and really unstable in drift. I believe they had actually released an update to the tire model with some of that feedback in mind, so I gave it another shot, and and while it definitely seems more stable, Lenny's 180SX to me still feels like you're playing the game on hard mode. The overall breaking point of the tires remains so low that it feels like you're drifting on PVC instead of rubber, and as a result, it requires a lot more low-end throttle modulation that I've had to do in real life. Moral of the story, there are plenty of easier packs you can drift on and still learn plenty from without wanting to throw your entire sim rig out the nearest window in a fit of rage. And number 10, Kunos cars. I'm mainly including these because I received a bunch of questions about the cars that come with the game. I'd say that a few of them are decent, like the BMWs, specifically the E92, to drift, which is what I generally recommend to anyone who doesn't have access to mods. But honestly, the mod cars generally blow these out of the water. If you're playing on console, they're fine. But if you're on PC, there is absolutely no reason to use these cars. So draw an imaginary line here, because I want to say the next four packs are a somewhat significant jump up from the previous ones and what I would consider mid-tier in terms of realism or driving feel. I found myself pretty conflicted for a few of them, thinking they should have been higher up. If I expanded the list any further, they'd probably skew more towards the top, but I've got a full-time job and a drift car that I'm scrambling to keep together between events, so here we are. Anyway, Anyway, number nine is BDC Street. I've tried multiple versions of this pack, including the most recent V4 update. The previous I thought was a little too abrasive or jerky when losing or gaining grip, and it seems like the recent update addressed that, but I think they might have gone a little too far. For me, this pack feels a little too floaty and not entirely connected to the road. The power is also instant on instead of having any sort of torque curve. Basically feels more like you're driving a really torquey V8 versus a turbo car. And it's not a bad pack by any means, but there are definitely some better ones on this list. Number eight, Aiden's S13. I wanted to test this one out after getting a few recommendations, and I wanted up enjoying it. Frankly, I don't have a lot to say about this one, and similar to BDC, I feel bad putting it this low. It does a lot of things well, but doesn't really stand out anywhere to me. It's kind of like that saying, jack of all trades, but master of none, which I unfortunately relate to on a personal level. It's a good ride with a decent balance. Overall, a pretty similar vibe to the 180SX and World Drift Tour Street, but with some more feedback from the road. From the notes on the cars, it sounds like they borrow physics from a few different packs, including World Drift Tour Street, so it probably makes sense that they feel similar. Number seven, one-to-one -one simulation. I really like the 180 in this pack, and if you look at some of the notes from some of the previous is Death Wish Garage cars. They may actually borrow some physics or tire modeling from this pack. Driving feel is decent with a good balance of grip and steering feel. I debated putting this pack higher, but honestly, I don't care much for the skyline. On that car, I just couldn't get myself into a smooth flow, so it just wasn't as enjoyable to drive compared to the 180. And then I don't have any feedback on the Lexus as that's a pro level car and my focus is grassroots. Moving on to number six, and this one might be controversial because it's Excite V2. I've actually owned and raced both a Mark II Celica Supra and a Mark III Supra in my lifetime, so I was really excited to give this pack a shot. What you're watching now is my sad attempt at drifting said Mark II at an autocross event back about 10 years ago. Nonetheless, when I first 
first tried this pack, it was the V1 version and I actually had it much lower down the list. However, there was a recent V2 update and as I understand, they're now leveraging arch physics with some different tires. I feel like I had to play around with setups a bit, but the handling is really solid once you get them dialed in. Keep in mind, these are more stock style cars, so they're not gonna have these crazy angle kits and whatnot. And as a result, that probably makes them a bit harder to drift than especially for a beginner. Overall, really wanted to rate Excite higher, but given it's a different style from pretty much everything else in the top five, it just felt a little bit out of place. Super fun pack to drive though, and especially if you love those old school JDM cars. Give it a shot. All right, quick halftime break before we go through the rest. The remaining packs are some of my current favorites in the game, and they probably shifted around about 10 times before I eventually got through this video. And apologies in advance, but here's a quick message from our sponsors. We still don't have any sponsors. Really? No, we have like three subscribers, and you spent all of our money on drifting and creating content for this channel. <laughs> well, shit. Anyway, number five, World Drift Tour Street. This is the legacy fan favorite. A ton of folks in the community have learned on these and they're still one of the most frequently recommended packs for beginners. This is actually the pack that I learned to drift on before going to my first real life event. However, after running my first event, I came back to these cars and they suddenly felt way too easy to break loose and keep sideways. I think World Drift Tour Street almost feels like you're drifting on a damp track, maybe not necessarily rain, but the front end can be a little bit numb in terms of steering feel. And they also seem to have a ton of torque basically everywhere in the power band, which makes it too easy to make corrections and especially during tandems. It's not to say they're bad, it's still a decent beginner pack, but I don't personally spend any time with them at this point. That said, you do generally find a bunch of folks saying that these cars feel like they're real life drift cars, so again, take that as you will. Number four, Gravy Garage. There is a laundry list of reasons why I probably shouldn't like these cars. The steering angle is arcade-ish, they straight crab walk when you try to turn from a stop, and the tire model they're running is outdated as hell, but somehow they're still one of my favorite cars to jump in and do casual tandems with. The main reason is because they do a pretty good job at replicating my frustration with real life tandem, where if you're not clutch kicking and keeping your revs up, you can very easily straighten out or fall behind the lead car. Are they a super realistic pack? Probably not. And I know some people are gonna roll their eyes with them being in the top five, but I still think Gravy's a great pack to learn with, especially given the popularity on servers. And you'll of course hear folks saying that they're too easy or whatever, but a proper setup drift car is meant to be easy. All right, we're almost there. Number three, and fuck it, I'm gonna try to pronounce this one, Sujigiri Light. If you watched my original video, you'll notice that these moved up in the rankings, and I feel like I appreciate them more each time I run them. It's kind of a newer trend with car packs where they're getting more grippy and skewing more towards an understeer characteristic as opposed to oversteer. As a result, you have to throw them around more aggressively to transition and keep them sideways, which is generally more true to a real life experience compared to packs like World Drift Tour Street that are super loose. In fact, the more I do local events, the more I find that the goal is to make your car more grippy to move up to higher levels. And as the lines between sim drifting and real life continue to blur, I think that's a driving factor for where a lot of these car packs are heading. Anyway, the understeer was originally one of my complaints for Sujigiri, but clearly I take it back. I also enjoy the lag on these and dips in power band, which is something you 100% have to account for when drifting in real life, overall becoming one of my favorite packs. And now I think number two might be another surprise because it's Fumi. This one actually surprised me. Apparently they borrow a bunch of physics from World Drift Tour Street and a few other packs with some adjustments. Frankly, they might be exactly the same and it's just a placebo, but somehow they feel more planted to me, which is what World Drift Tour Street was missing. I did dig through some of the files and there are definitely some differences from the World Drift Tour Street cars. For example, in the tire file in the S13, it mentions DWG tire set, so it's possible they borrowed from Deathwish. Overall, they've got a great feel and balance, and I could 100% see myself drifting these more frequently, but there are absolutely zero servers. And I'm especially surprised about that because BMWs are becoming more and more frequent at local events, and this pack has a ton of them. Nonetheless, give them a shot if you haven't already. They really are a pretty fun drive. Number one, Death Wish Garage. Surprise, surprise, Death Wish Garage keeps the throne. I do like some of the cars more than others, but this to me is by far the best overall pack out there right now. I said something similar in my previous review, but I really feel like they're the most complete combination of strengths from the other packs on this list. Similar to Sujigi, these cars are starting to skew more grippy, which means you need to drive them more aggressively to keep them sideways, which again is more realistic compared to looser handling packs like World Drift Tour Street. Honestly, I think my biggest gripe with this pack is that it's so hard to find other people to tandem with because the Death Wish servers are always a ghost town, which is crazy because the community seems to universally agree that these are some of the best cars out there right now. If you don't have them, check them out and start joining some damn servers because there's no reason Death Wish shouldn't be a top pack out there right now. In summary, if you're just getting into the game, the top five packs on this list would be my recommendation for getting started. But Try everything because you probably should drive a wide range of packs to help build a well-rounded skill set. Also, explore for yourself because there are new packs coming out all the time, and you might even find a car that you love in a pack that was rated low on this list. A big factor in that is that some packs can feel better or worse depending on your wheel setup. For example, a pack that feels good on direct drive might be more of a handful on belt or gear drive. You're probably going to encounter a shitload of other opinions on the best car packs in Assetto Corsa, but hopefully this one helped provide some useful context and get you pointed in the right direction. As always, I'm happy to answer any questions in the comments or on Discord, even if you just want to tell me that I'm a jackass for ranking your favorite pack low. Either way, hopefully I'll see you next time.